Threat modeling is a term that comes up a lot in the privacy and security communities, but what exactly does it mean? My name is Nathan Bartram, and in this video, I'm going to explain to you what threat modeling is, and I'm gonna walk you through how to design your own threat model. So what is threat modeling? Well, quite frankly, threat modeling is just a fancy term that means what are you defending and who are you defending it from? For example, a cop probably wants to protect their home address from vengeful criminals and keep it off the public record. A journalist probably wants to protect the anonymity of their sources. In the privacy community, threat modeling typically refers to the types and sources of data that we generate and those who would attempt to gather that data. Most people in the privacy community are focused on reducing the amount of data collected by Google, Amazon, or Facebook, for example, or simply trying to protect themselves from identity theft, stalking, or doxing. There is no one-size-fits-all threat model, and there is no list of threat models to pick from. You're going to have to make your own because your unique situation varies. Nobody can come in and tell you, you need threat model A. It's completely up to you what you're trying to protect and what you're going up against. So first off, why do you need a threat model? Well, a threat model helps you know what to protect. It is essentially impossible to protect yourself from everything all the time, and it's exhausting too. So it's really important to prioritize the threats that you are most likely to face and the ones that are going to be most devastating if they were to happen to you. And we'll get to that in just a moment, but keep that in the back of your mind. You need a threat model because it helps give you a clear picture of what you need to do. So how do you build your own threat model? Let's talk about that. Before I jump in, I want it to be noted that this video is going to draw heavily from the Electronic Frontier Foundation's Surveillance Self-Defense Guide. If there's anything I don't explain well, you should consider checking out their guide as it may answer your questions. Step one is to ask yourself, what do I want to protect? Now, in this video, we're gonna talk specifically about digital privacy and cybersecurity. So we're gonna talk about data, but for the record, this could be applied to almost anything. When it comes to the digital realm, there are two types of assets. There's tangible assets and intangible assets. Tangible would be things like laptops and phones and external hard drives. Intangible objects would be things like social security numbers and passwords. When you're being specific, don't just say, I wanna protect my data. Say, I want to protect my laptop. I want to protect my email account. Step two is to ask, who do I want to protect this stuff from? Again, be specific. Bad guys may be a technically correct answer, but it's not very helpful. I want to protect myself from data breaches, or I want to protect myself from identity thieves, stalkers, stolen phones, things like that. Those are very helpful because they're very specific and they give you a better idea of what you need to protect. I want it to be noted that on my site and on my channels, I don't cover state threat models or governments. So that is a totally valid answer to question number two. But if that is your answer, I just want you to know that I'm not going to give you all the answers here. There is additional research that you're going to have to go out and do on your own. Step three is to ask yourself, what will happen if I fail to protect this data or device? Not all failures carry the same level of consequence. For example, imagine if your primary email address was hacked, the email address that you use to communicate with doctors and apply for jobs and get all your bills and things like that. Now, imagine if your TikTok was hacked. I mean, that would probably really, really suck, but it's probably not going to be nearly as devastating to your life. So it's important to remember that not all failures are equal. Some of them will have much more serious consequences. Related to that, step number four is to say, how likely is it that I will need to protect this data? Just because something might be really serious if you fail doesn't necessarily mean that it's very likely. For example, having your bank account numbers stolen would be really serious, but honestly, it's pretty rare. It's much more likely that your email address is going to be fished or your card number is going to be stolen in a data breach. The point is, just because something is really serious doesn't mean it's likely. And vice versa, just because something is really likely doesn't mean it's serious. You have to weigh how likely it is versus how serious it would be. Step five is a question that really gets overlooked a lot. And the question is, how much trouble am I willing to go through to protect this information? You can put in some seriously hardcore security in your life, but if it becomes too much work, you're not gonna use it. You have to find a balance between privacy and security and convenience. Think of it like a diet. Diets only work 
when they are sustained in the long run. If you quit drinking sodas and eating junk food for a week, you're gonna lose weight. But once you stop that diet, you're gonna gain all that weight back. A lot of people suggest that instead of quitting sodas, you switch to diet sodas or something like that. Privacy and security is the same way. Instead of putting in the most hardcore check that is gonna make you super, super secure, but it's gonna get really annoying and you're gonna give it up after a while, put in something that's maybe not quite so secure, but you know that you're willing to keep doing it. On that note, don't forget, you can always change this stuff later. If you go halfway secure and you realize later like, oh, this is really easy, I can do more. Go ahead and do more. There's nothing wrong with that. You don't have to keep doing the same thing that you do now forever. Last but not least, step number six is to act on this stuff. Once you've got a good idea of what you wanna protect, who you're protecting it from, the likelihood and the consequences, and where that line of convenience is for you, this doesn't do you any good unless you actually do something about it and implement the tools to protect yourself. If you need help deciding what tools are right for your threat model, be sure to check out my website, thenewoil.xyz. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.